All right, so I would just like to say shout out to Netflix, shout out to Lee Daniels, shout out to everybody involved that listened to episode two of my podcast entitled Fuck a Bond Franchise. Now, in all reality, they probably have not heard of it, cared about it, thought of it. It's episode two, in case y'all want to listen to it. But it's like the universe heard my cries and they are coming to deliver. I say all that to say in uh, just of what I discussed, one thing I was discussing was that we need to expand the genres in which we're producing product or movies and TV shows with mainly black cast. Because me, who champions for all black creatives, I believe that we have the range to do that. And it just sucks that we're just kind of getting the same exact genres when we should be exploring other genres like sci-fi and horrors. Now, I didn't negate away from, or I didn't ignore the fact that Over the past few years, we have been producing way more quality horrors, solid projects with black cast. We've been doing that. One of my favorite is Spell that stars Omari Hardwick and Loretta Devine. Okay, that's one of my favorites. And it came out within the past like two, three years. But I just like the fact that we are continuing this new trend of like expanding our genres. So I'm not going to get any more into that. I'm just going to get into like what I'm actually discussing today. But if you do want to listen to that podcast episode, it is episode two of the Rated B podcast titled Fuck Upon Franchise. Now, this is not episode three. This is just me very excited about this news and just all the players involved and just not being able to shut up about it. So I'm about to just talk about it. Lee Daniels, who's known for the United States versus Billie Holiday, as well as The Butler, as well as Empire, Star on Fox, blah, blah, blah. He is directing this untitled exorcism thriller that is based on a true story. And, okay, so number one, that's the backdrop, a quick backdrop. But who it stars is what really matters. Okay, so it stars Andre Day, Octavia Spencer, Anjanou Ellis, Kayla McLaughlin, Rob Morgan, and Glenn Close. Before I get into the actual storyline, can we just go back to three people I really... Well, let's just discuss this. Number one, I'm here for Andre Day having more projects. She killed her role as Billie Holiday in the United States versus Billie Holiday. That movie was trash. Did not enjoy it. It was a struggle to get through it. And it sucked because Andre Day did an award-worthy performance of Billie Holiday. She did. And unfortunately, I felt like they didn't give that story the care that it deserves. But very excited to see her with more roles as an actress. I think she has the chops to really do it. And if you listen to any of her interviews about the actual role and preparing for it, sis dedicated herself. So I'm all about, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And she worked her ass off and it it showed. So that's on Andre Day. Next, Octavia Spencer. We're not going to sleep on the fact that she has a very well-rounded resume and she was in Ma. And I say, yo, Octavia Spencer, here for you in the horror, in the horror genre. I can see it. I can see her doing more. The psychological thrillers, like I'm, I'm here for that because she's played a lot of various roles, but seeing her in a role that is just not kind of what you expect, like a, a horror or a thriller type of thing, support. Next, Anjanou Ellis. Let me just say something. I might be her biggest fan. And it's not that I just, I'm a fan of her work. I'm a, I'm a champion for her being truly recognized for her talent. Case in point, Anjanou Ellis has starred in tons of projects since the mid 90s and outside of her tv roles she starred in movies like in too deep men of honor um undercover brother which was a good one ray motherhood the taking of pelham 123 the help with octavia spencer birth of a nation of mind and music get on up if bill street could talk the list goes on and on and on. She fucking killed it in Lovecraft Country. She starred in so much shit. However, all of a sudden, Hollywood's taking notice. That's why I'm big on giving black actors and minority actors their fucking flowers because Hollywood is always fucking late to our talent. So Variety wrote up that, I quote, King Richard Breakout, Anjanou Ellis. King Richard Breakout, Anjanou Ellis. Y'all gonna tell me 
somebody that's been on this in Hollywood and has been acting her ass off, constantly working since the mid 90s, y'all just now are paying attention to her? Y'all are just now trying to give her all this praise and, and recognition for her work? That's why I don't really be fucking with Hollywood like that because y'all don't see real talent when it's smacking y'all dead in the face. I have been a stan of hers for years and she is somebody, <laughs> I swear to y'all, whenever I see her name in a project, I'm like, oh, this shit about to be good. Easily. Whenever I see her name, I know this about to be good. You can never go wrong with Anjanu. She has never disappointed me in a role, ever. Anywho, that's just, that's just my little rant on the fact that Hollywood, get y'all shit together. It's like, I appreciate that y'all are seeing her, but y'all needed to fix y'all vision years ago. Anywho, moving on. So somebody that I do think Hollywood needs to pay more attention to and give him credit where it's due is Rob Morgan. I will say, I don't stand him enough. He is another actor. When I see his name in projects, I know that's just going to be good. It's like Hollywood is full of actors and actresses. But there are just some actors and actresses that you know, if their name is attached, I'm in for a treat. I'm waiting to see them. Um, Next, very excited to see Caleb in more stuff. He's most known for Stranger Things, but he also recently starred in Concrete Cowboy. And if I'm not mistaken, and I'm too lazy to fact check this, he was on The Lion King on Broadway. He He starred in The Lion King on Broadway. And The Lion King of Broadway is top tier. One of the best Broadway projects ever. I've seen it three times. And I plan on making it a fourth, fifth, sixth, ten times. I think it's just one of those projects uh, down to the movies and Broadway that's just phenomenal. So, and Glenn Cole's like, she's solid as fuck. Don't really need to discuss her because we just know she's good and i love white actors as well but yeah moving right along so i'd said all that to say now that i'm past discussing all the actors and reminding hollywood to get their shit together and start praising you know black actors and actresses the same way they praise you know non-minority talent the story is ba- it's based on a true story based on latoya ammons if i mess up her name my apologies and her three children who were living in a home in Gary, Indiana, and just some weird ass shit was happening. Things like the children levitating, the children becoming violent with one another, speaking in growls and deep voices, and then having no memory of it at all. Despite skepticism, the Gary Police Department, sorry, this happened in Gary, Indiana, but the Gary Police Department, Department of Child Services, and a local church and hospital were all involved in a situation that was deemed supernatural. So the officers, doctors, and social workers all said they witnessed many of the incidences, including one in which Ammon's nine-year-old son walked backwards up a wall. Backwards, y'all. It was, it was covered by the Indianapolis Star very closely as the Department of Child Services investigated the situation. That shit sound crazy. And I'm here for the development of it. Now, this has been in the works since, I believe, like 2014. Per usual, nothing happened. However, I will say that Daniels has been a part of being made into a movie since this story was first breaking out. So he's been on board with this for years. And he's also writing it as well as directing it. Yeah, so not going to get into like who's playing who. That's all irrelevant. I just, I'm beyond elated with this project that's coming out. One is based on a true story. Horrors based on true stories always scare the shit out of me because it really happened. I do want to know the movie will be based on this case, but it's going to be a fictional thriller. So regardless, I'm very excited about this. So that's all I had to say about this random rant with Rated B Podcast. So let me know your thoughts. Are you here for it? Are you not here for it? Are you, do you want me to shut the fuck up? If you do, please don't say that. Like, that's me. But yeah, I'll see you on the flip side.